A bluesy lick to take you from the five chord to the four chord and then back to the one chord. Sounds like this. One, two, three. <laughs> All right, let's break that down. Okay, close look at the fretboard, diving right into this lesson. You could follow along using my tablature and PDF study guide at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. Now friends, you know that you're developing as a lead guitarist. When you start to build an arsenal of licks that have very specific usages within a given chord progression. Now here we're talking about a 12 bar blues. That one change in the 12 bar that takes you from the five chord, or I'm in the key of A, so that's E7 or E9 down to the four chord, and then back to the one chord. All right, at that point, that's where the, the uh, turnaround would go. Okay, so it's that five to four, back to one change that we're tackling today. And we're going to learn a lick that is specifically designed to sound good melodically over that chord progression. Okay, so before we jump into learning our lick, there's three chord shapes that I want you to be able to visualize. All right, and we're going to be responding to these chord shapes and then also pulling notes out of them to create the lick. So the first one is the five chord in the key of A. So that would be A, B, C sharp, D, E. Okay, so the five chord in the key of A is E major. Always remember that. Okay, so we're gonna have it as a little triad on the G, B, and high E strings. Ninth fret G, ninth fret B, and seventh fret high E. The five chord, E major. You take that down a whole step, and you've got the four chord, D major. Okay, these are just kind of little bits of the full bar chord shapes that we'd have for those two chords. All right, so E major, D major, and then finally, the third shape is the one chord, A major. Okay, so practice those chord shapes. You're going to need to be able to visualize them if you want to be able to see the connection between the lick you're learning and the chord shapes that the lick is being played over top of. Okay, now diving into the lick of the week. Again, it's going to sound like this. One, two, three, and four, and... And real slow. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... Okay, let's break that down. Okay, so what we have there is basically two licks in one. The first one is for the five chord. Sounds like this. Okay, so we're sliding up to the root of that chord. E, okay, on the G string, ninth fret. Then to the B string, eight, and then up to 10. Okay, next we're going to really slide into this chordal position. I slid down from eight down to seven on the high E string. All right, then we're going to play. All right, so that was the B string eighth fret up to nine, and then to the seventh fret high E string. So far you have. Okay, then the final part of this lick. Slide in from eight down to seven on the B string, and then to the fifth fret of the B string. All right, that's the full lick for the E chord. Okay, now make sure that you can count it. And four, and one, and two, and three, and. Okay, from there, we're going uh, to the lick for D major. Okay, this one's gonna start with a double stop bend. Okay, so we started off fretting the seventh fret of the B string and eighth fret of the high E string. Bend that up, then go to the fifth fret of the high E string. Okay, next we're visualizing that D major chord shape. We're going to be dancing back and forth between that chord's minor third and major third. That's a very common blues technique. So this part's gonna sound like this. And then it drops you off onto the A chord. All right, so we have the high E string fifth fret. I'm kind of barring across the B string and the high E string. All right, then I'm going to play a hammer from six up to seven on the B. All right, if I wanna get the high E string in there at the same time, it's gonna sound great. 
All right, then back to the high E string fifth fret. Then we're going to do a slur. Okay, it's a series of pull-offs. Okay, so that was uh, seven, six, five, and then seven on the G string. Peeling my fingers down on the strings. All right, then we're going to play five on the G. All right, the A major chord is coming in. So I go to the sixth fret, the major third of that chord, and then to the root note, A, on the fifth fret of the high E string. You put all that together and we've got. Okay, and real slow. Okay, now connecting uh, part one of this lick to part two, the E major to the D major back to the one change. Should sound like this. One, two, three, and four, and. Okay, now at full speed. One, two, three, and four. All right, practice that nice and slow. I'm gonna play the chord change for you now a few times so that way you can practice it and get it into your fingers. Five repetitions of the chord change. One, two, three, E. D. And back to A. One, two, three, four. Again. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, and one. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four, and one. Let's do it one more time. One, two, three, and four, and one. Two, three, four, and one. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this lick of the week. Remember to keep practicing, get this into your fingertips, and remember that speed is a gradual pursuit. You really need to practice these things slow and without mistakes over and over again before you're able to implement them into your plane and get them up to full speed.